Okay. Um, this will probably be the last video on my series entitled Slavery in the Bible. What I want to do now is, in conclusion, is turn my attention a little bit to the abolitionist movement and also look at modern day slavery. Um, there are basically um, four, uh, uh, or actually five, aboli uh, Christian abolitionists that actually helped start or flame the abolitionist movement that would eventually. Um, uh, lead to the the uh, or be a part of the uh, American Civil War. Um, the first abolitionist I want to bring to your attention is Charles G. Finney. Up until the early 1800s, those within the abolitionist movement saw the elimination of slavery as a long, slow process. But it was not until the preaching of Charles G. Finney, um, uh, a Christian preacher, that Americans began to realize that slavery could be done away with suddenly, once and for all. Finney was very involved with the abolitionist movement and frequently denounced slavery from the pulpit. Beginning in the 1830s, he denied communion to slaveholders in his churches. Uh, Charles G. Finney, you know, again, he was one of the great revival preachers of the Second Awakening, recorded in his memoirs, I've made up my mind on the question of slavery and was exceedingly anxious to arouse public attention to the subject. In my prayers and preaching, I, I so often alluded to slavery and denounced it that a considerable excitement came to exist among the people. This is according to his memoirs, 1876. Then there's the abolitionist Theodore Weld. Uh, the excitement that accompanied Feeney's uh, re revivals affected one young man named Theodore Weld. Weld was initially and vehemently opposed to Feeney's work, but was converted in New York and during one of Feeney's, uh, during one of Feeney's meetings. Well was a formidable enemy to Mr. Finney, but after salvation he began an ardent supporter, and Well traveled with Finney, assisting the preacher in his meetings, and later emerged as a student, uh, student leader at Lane Seminary in Cincinnati, Ohio. For a period of time when Well traveled with Finney, he was, taught, he was taught the biblical view of sin and its effects on the individual and society. Finney believed that the individuals could be liberated from sin and that sin and society could be confronted and overthrown through preaching of the gospel. Anything that was destructive or dehumanizing to the human race was deemed a sin. Um, studying the Old Testament and the study of the, uh, the story of the tribes of Israel and their liberation from slavery in Egypt, as well as the teachings of Jesus Christ, both Feeney and Weld came to the conclusion that slavery was sin. Uh, therefore, it had to be rooted out and destroyed immediately. It could not be tolerated even, or even temporarily. Slavery, according to Feeney and Weld's view, must be attacked and overthrown by the power of God and God's Holy Spirit in the believer's life. In the Bible argument, as it was called, Weld attempted to prove that slavery in the Bible was different, and was different in the kind of slavery, uh, different in kind from the American slavery as they were seeing it. For the Old Testament slaves had rights and were regarded as persons, while American slaves were viewed as simply uh, non -par or, uh, non -par uh, or basically just uh, just property. Um, so clearly, these two abolitionists, who were very much uh, a part of, of, of fanning the flame for abolition saw in the Bible that the that the slavery they, that they were experiencing was sinful and was different from what was being uh, de depicted in both the Old and New Testament, and which is what I've laid out here in this video series. They weren't the only ones. There was Harriet Beecher Stowe, or daughter of Lehman Beecher, who was a Presbyterian minister, and of course. She's a very famous abolitionist. Uh, she wrote uh, uh, the novel Uncle, Do Uncle Tom's Cabin, which came out in 1852, uh, less than a decade before the Civil War, uh, and depicted life of African Americans under American slavery. And it reached millions as a novel and a play and became influential both in, in the United States and in Britain. And then, of course, there's William Lloyd Garrison, who was a prominent American abolitionist, journalist, and social reformer. All these people are Christians. All these people looked at their Bibles looked at what they were experiencing at slavery as they saw it and could see that what they were seeing was sinful. Okay? Um, these Christians were, were, of course, some of the most hated men and women in America. All across the South, rewards were posted for their lives. Southern postmasters routinely uh, collected their pamphlets from the mail and burned them. In the North, these radicals were mobbed, shouted down, and beaten up. Their houses were burned and their printing presses were destroyed. For 30 years, to the very eve of the Civil War, the word abolitionist was an insult. After the Civil War, abolitionists were lionized, but then soon after they were forgotten, and they still are. So, you know, I find it amazing that we, we have this conversation about slavery, but for some reason, you know, the, abolition, uh, the abolitionist movement is never brought up, nor is it ever brought up that a lot of it was flamed by Christians 
Christians who looked in their Bible and could clearly see what was being taught in the Bible was different from what they were experiencing uh, uh, pre-Civil War America. Now, I know there were Christian, Christian uh, slaveholders. But what I find ironic is that skeptics today apparently view the, the Bible the same way that, that the slaveholders view the Bible. And those of us who have spent time studying this topic and understand it can clearly see what's being taught in the Bible and view the Bible in the same way that the abolitionists viewed it. Um, uh, as far as the churches were concerned, you know, some of the churches accepted the abolitionist argument and did excommunicate slaveholders. More, however, felt that abolitionists were going too far, but the main the thrust of most of the churches was tr was to try to keep the peace at all costs, and of course uh, that failed because the Civil War still happened. And of course your largest denominations eventually split over the issue both north and south. Um, and a lot of times if you look at the church history, it's kind of funny how the churches fail. Um, more, your more evangelistic churches seem to fall on the side of the abolitionists, your more traditional um, Traditional um, churches seem to fall inside the slaveholders. So, but again, both sides tried to keep peace. They didn't want war. And uh, I would encourage any of you who, who are really interested in this topic, spend some time reading through some abolitionist literature, especially uh, some of the Christians that I just shared with you. Um, they came to the same conclu conclusion that I've come to, and that is the Bible did not condone slavery as we or as they understood it and saw it and knew it. Now I want to turn the rest of this video over to the attention of modern day slavery. You know, experts estimate that today there are, there are between 30 and 50 million people enslaved around the world. And that is today. It's happening in countries all on all six inhabited continents, and yes, that includes the United States. The CIA estimates you have between 15 to 20 thousand victims that are trafficked trafficked through the uh, United States every year. What hasn't been done? What ha What has? What hasn't more? Why hasn't more been done to end a dehumanizing, universally condemned practice? One challenge is that slavery today takes a, a subtle, takes on subtle forms, takes on more subtle forms than it did during the uh, pre-Civil War slave trade. This includes sex trafficking, trafficking, uh, debt bondage, forced domestic and agricultural labor, and chattel slavery, making it tougher to identify and eradicate. P the point being is that it's still a problem. And my question to skeptics that rail against the issue of slavery in the Old Testament is what are you doing about modern day, the modern day problem? To me it seems a little hypocritical to rail against something that took place over 3,000 years ago and yet do nothing about a practice that is actually happening today. So I'm going to give you an opportunity not to be a hypocrite anymore. There are Christian groups trying to help around the world, uh, trying to buy slaves out of their bondage and even at times risking their lives to return loved ones back to their families. I've included some links in this video to the, to the right. And they, that would give you an opportunity to donate to some of those organizations and uh, make sure that you're not being a hypocrite if you're complaining about slavery in the Old Testament or in the Bible. And that's all I have. Thank you very much.